Hey guys, today we will see how to make one of my favorite street food of Bombay, Vada Pao. This is so easy to make and so tasty that you don't need to be in Bombay to experience this humble tasty snack. So we know that for Vada Pao, we need the Pao, red or green chutney and the Vada. We will start by making the red chutney. For that, heat a pan and add one third cup of ground nuts. We will dry roast the ground nuts at medium high heat till we get a nice color on them. Toss them around continuously so we don't have any burnt ground nuts. Once it's done, peel off the skin of the ground nuts. They will come off really easily just like that with your fingers. Do the same to all the ground nuts and keep them aside. To the same pan, add 1 teaspoon of oil. Once hot, add 6 cloves of garlic lightly crushed, like how you can see. Fry this till you get a nice brown color on them. Please do support us by subscribing to our channel and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Now you see that they have got a nice brown color. We will add 4 dry red chilies, roughly chopped. Fry that for a minute. Then we will add 1 third cup of shredded coconut and fry it till light brown color. I'm using a packed coconut here so it's not fresh. You can use dry coconut as well. Next I'm adding 1 tablespoon of white sesame seeds. Fry this for another 30 seconds. Switch off the gas and let this cool down a bit. Once cooled down, add the roasted and peeled ground nuts to this fried mixture and grind it to a fine powder. This is the texture that we need once it's grounded. Keep this aside and next we'll make the potato filling for the vada. For this, in a wok or kadai, add 1 tablespoon of oil. Once hot, add 1 fourth teaspoon of black mustard seeds. As it starts to splutter, add half a teaspoon of cumin seeds and two red or green chilies chopped. Fry for 30 seconds and add half a medium onion finely chopped. Fry this on medium heat till they are translucent. Then we'll add two teaspoons of grated ginger and fry till the raw smell of ginger is gone. After about 2 minutes, add 1 teaspoon of coriander powder. Then about half a teaspoon of turmeric powder for a nice color. Fry for a minute. After a minute, we will add 2 large potatoes that I have boiled and lightly mashed. Mix this well with the onion mixture. Using a silicone spatula like the one that I'm using makes the mixing very, very easy. Once mixed, add 2 tablespoons of fresh coriander and mix it again. The fresh coriander gives an amazing taste, so try not to skip it. Finally, we'll add in some salt to taste, give that a mix. Switch off the gas and keep it aside to cool down. Meanwhile, let's make the batter for the vada. For that, I have taken 1 cup of chickpea flour or besan. Using a whisk, I will just mix it around to remove any lumps that's there. This just makes it easier when we add the water. Then we'll add 1 fourth cup of rice flour. 1 fourth of a teaspoon of hing or asafoetida, 1 eighth of a teaspoon of turmeric powder and salt to taste. Now mix this first and then start adding water little by little. In total I have used 1 cup of water. Add this little at a time as it gets easier to mix and not have lumps. Mix it well so there are absolutely no lumps.
the amount of water needed will vary so just be aware of the thickness of the batter This is the thickness we need, not very thick, not very thin, just about the right consistency to coat the vadas. Now that our batter is ready, we'll take it to the frying station. But before frying, we'll make some balls from the potato mixture that we had prepared that is now cooled down. Just make round shape with your palms and place them on a plate. I could make about 12 potato balls with this mixture. Let's get on to frying now. I have heated oil in a wok. Make sure the oil is hot enough that when you drop a little batter, it floats up immediately. We will dip the potato balls in the batter and then drop it into the oil carefully. When you dip the balls into the batter and take it out, make sure to let the excess batter drip away and then add it to the oil. The heat is at medium height. Keep tossing and turning the vadas as you go. I am an absolute fan of the vada pav. The best vada pav I've had is the one that my uncle used to get whenever I visited Bombay. I can't really recall the name right now from where he got it, but you leave a comment and let me know where you've had the best vada pav in Bombay or anywhere else in the world. So if I'm around that place anytime, I make sure to try it. Okay, so a few of them have got a nice brown color to it. Look at that beautiful brown color that it's got. That's the perfect color, which means it's perfectly done. So I'm taking it out. I'm only taking those out, which have got the nice color and are done. I'm letting re the rest cook further. Keep taking out each one that you think is done and cook the rest, which need to be cooked more. Finally, I think all of them are done, so I'm taking all of it out onto a kitchen tissue. Each vada is so well done here and they look so tempting. So without wasting time, let's go ahead and assemble them to make the vada pav. Now you can use store-bought pav or click the link above or in the description to see how to make super soft and tasty pav easily at home. So first I'm putting the red chutney at the bottom of the pav, placing a vada on top of it, closing the pav and pressing it down. Our first vada pav is ready and it looks irresistible. You can also use pudina chutney to make the vada pav. I'm making the next one with that. The soft pav with the crispy yummy vada and the spicy chutney, oh my god. Just enjoy these vada pavs and give this video a like as you do. And I will see you next week with another recipe. Bye!